Thank you. Thank you, John Ryder. Thank you for that kind introduction. Thank you for your leadership of a great organization. And uh, let's give another round of applause to the 2016 Republican Lawyer of the Year. Congratulations, John. <laughs> really is an honor to be with all of you today here at the Republican National Lawyers Association. Uh, I came here today just to say thank you. And thank you for the work that you've done supporting this administration. Thank you for the work that each and every one of you do to hold up Republican ideals and principles in the profession of the law. And before I get started, let me bring greetings and thanks as well from the 45th President of the United States of America. I bring greetings from President Donald Trump. It really is a privilege to be with all of you today because for a brief moment in my life, I too was a Republican lawyer. <laughs> I really was, I'll tell you. And I, I just know the role that each and every one of you play in the life of the nation, uh, holding up our principles and our ideals in your profession. But I also know, and the president and I couldn't be more grateful, the role that each and every one of you in this room, and you're more than 6,000 members across the country, have played to ensure the integrity of American elections, past, present, and future. Thank you all. And it really is, uh, it really is my purpose today just to say thank you. Thank you for the warm welcome. Thank you mostly for what each and every one of you have done. I mean, since you, because of your efforts all the way through Election Day and every day since, there's only one way you can describe the last 18 months. It's been 18 months of action. It's been 18 months of results. It's been 18 months of promises made and promises kept. And we're just getting started. I mean, think about it. Think about the progress that we've made as a nation since Election Day. It really is extraordinary. Uh, we we're part of an administration that's been busy rebuilding our military, restoring the arsenal of democracy. I have to tell you, as the proud father of a United States Marine, I couldn't be more proud. I couldn't be more proud to serve alongside a president who recently signed the largest increase in our national defense since the days of Ronald Reagan. And then how about this economy? This president kept his word from early on. <laughs> president Donald Trump literally from the first day of this administration went to work to unleash the bound up potential of the American economy. President Trump has actually signed more bills rolling back federal red tape than any president in American history. We've unleashed American energy. We're now exporting energy as never before. And President Donald Trump, just before Christmas, signed the largest tax cuts and tax reform in American history. And this economy is rolling as a result. I mean, really, it really is remarkable when you think about it. nearly 4 million jobs created since Election Day. Unemployment setting new records. I have to tell you, the president and I couldn't be more proud that we have set new records, the lowest unemployment rate ever recorded for African Americans and Hispanic Americans. The American dream is working again for every American. And those 401ks, those pension funds, retirement are getting stronger every day. A stock market that's grown by nearly 40%. And just this last week, on the front pages of papers around the country, there was news, the longest running bull market in American history. And you all saw those second quarter numbers. It just reminded me of a day, it was, a, it was an event about like this with people in New York City. I, I was on the campaign trail in September of 2016. And then the, uh, the Republican candidate asked me to join him at the Economic Club of New York. And I got to tell you, for a small town guy from southern Indiana, it was kind of a, 
what we call a fancy schmancy deal. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, it was in one of these really fancy ballrooms in New York, and we were backstage talking behind some of these kind of same curtains. And there he was, the man I used to call Donald. And he was looking at the speech. And he said, okay, got to the part where it says we're going to cut regulation, unleash American energy, we're going to cut taxes. And then he's reading it out loud, and he said, and then we're going to see the national economy is going to grow by 3% by the end of our first term. And then he looked up at the speechwriters and said, I think it's going to be more than that. <laughs> and they said, well, no, I mean, we do too. But, I mean, the economy, the economy hasn't grown by more than 2%, you know, for more than the last decade. So let's just go with three. <laughs> three be good. And he goes, no, I think it's going to be more than three. And they said, no, let's, here's the thing. Just how about three? So... <laughs> And he says, okay, but I think it's going to be more. And, he went, and then you can go on, go on YouTube later or, you know, during the speech if you're bored. And, and <laughs> just go check it out. So he goes out there. I'm sitting like right over here, one of all these people up on the, you know, on the stage with us. And I'm in the line of sight. And I, it, so anyway, he gets that part of the speech and said, we're going to cut taxes. We're going to roll back regulation and unleash American energy. And I am establishing a national goal of 4% economic growth in the GDP. And then he looked and he said, now those people backstage didn't want me to tell you that. But he said, I think it's going to happen. And the end of the second quarter, in our second year, we posted 4.1% growth in the gross domestic product. And we're just getting started. All of that's what happens when you put common sense Republican principles into practice. Because that's what you've made possible. That's what this great Republican Lawyers Association has made possible. Really, since 1985, you've been hard at it. Your 6,000 members brought together Republican lawyers across the country to help advance our principles. And in that 2016 election, I'm actually told that more than 1,000 1, uh, members of RNLA we're out ensuring election integrity all across the country. And, uh, and you worked around the clock, and we just couldn't be more grateful to each and every one of you. So you know what? If you like what you see happening, get used to it and stay involved. But give yourselves a round of applause, will you? Because the RNLA made a difference. You did. And before I go further, there's a couple of people I want to thank. One of them is a great Republican lawyer from the Hoosier State who serves as the general counsel of the office of the vice president. I'm particularly proud of him. Would you, John, just he brought this whole thing together. Today. Matt Morgan, I don't know where you are. Can you take a bow? Matt Morgan with our team. There's in the back of the room. Thank you, Matt. Really smart guy, really great guy. And uh, there's one other person that I just uh, I have to acknowledge who's here. There's so many legendary Republican lawyers in this group, but uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention someone who in the past was a White House counsel, not just to one president, but to two, and he continues to be uh, emblematic of what it means to be a principled Republican lawyer in America. Fred Fielding, would you mind taking a bow and giving us a chance? Stand up, Fred. Let's just... You can get on your feet if you want to thank Fred. He's sure done a lot of work for the cause and for the country. Thank you, Fred. So I'm here really to say thanks to all of you. All of, all of you folks who got hair the same color as Fred and me and and all of you all of you young people in the room as well. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for the your commitment to Republican principles and ideals and to putting feet on them by being involved in the RNLA. You know, since Election Day, this group has stood with our administration, helped advance that agenda, but it's probably, probably been no more significant to the long-term interests of the life of this nation uh, than the support that you have provided as President Donald Trump has kept his word to appoint judges who will support defend and uphold the Constitution of the United States as written. Because of your support to date, President Trump has nominated over 130 extraordinary women and men to our federal courts, and they're conservatives all. And working with the Republican Senate, 
uh, despite unprecedented opposition by Senate Democrats, we've actually been able to confirm nominees at a record rate. In 2017, we set a record for the most Court of Appeals judges confirmed in a single year of any administration in American history. And, uh, and, and, in fact, in the first two years of this administration, we're up to 26 circuit court confirmations as of the end of last week with a lot more work to go. Overall, the Senate has now confirmed 53 of our, our nominees to lifetime appointments on the federal judiciary, and the RNLA will be pleased to know that we've also confirmed 65 United States attorneys who will stand firm and uphold the rule of law all across America. I want to give credit where credit is due. You know, working with the Senate, uh, I actually think last time I checked, I think I'm up to eight tie-breaking votes. <laughs> it's pretty close quarters in the Senate these days. <laughs> I'll have more to say about that in just a minute. <laughs> All right. But I do, want to say, I do want to say a heartfelt thanks to two people in particular, and I hope you'll join me in showing your appreciation to Chairman Chuck Grassley and Republican leader Mitch McConnell. Thank you for delivering for America and for a principled American judiciary. They've done a great job. Now, the men and women in this room have been supporting our judicial nominees across the board. You and your peers across the country have made our case in your states with your peers and, and, and in the public debate. The President and I are truly grateful for everything that you've done. Uh, in fact, uh, I know you're particularly grateful that uh, we also nominated a, a number of RNLA members uh, to positions on the courts around the country, including uh, one uh, who ended up serving with distinction on the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals, a former RNLA member by the name of Justice Neil Gorsuch. What a great guy. You know, in nominating Justice Gorsuch, President Trump kept his word. Kept his word to appoint a justice in the mold of the late and great Justice Antonin Scalia. And frankly, seeing the early days of his tenure on the Supreme Court of the United States, Justice Gorsuch has already proven. He's already proven himself for the trust that the President has placed in him um, and, uh, and his commitment to the Constitution and the principles of limited government that are enshrined there. President Donald Trump and I couldn't be more proud of Justice Neil Gorsuch. And we also couldn't be more proud of the next justice to the Supreme Court of the United States, Judge Brett Kavanaugh. Really. Now, I don't have to tell members of the Republican National Lawyers Association that Judge Kavanaugh has impeccable qualifications and credentials, but I'm going to anyway, <laughs> because the word needs to get out. It's a critical time in the process of, of confirmation in the United States Senate and the opportunity to gather before all of you and to pay more attention to what we already know about this extraordinary jurist is a timely and, and good use. Judge Brad Kavanaugh uh, actually went to the same prep school not far from here that, uh, that produced Justice Neil Gorsuch. I'm, I was told once that they were actually in school there around the same time. The motto of that prep school that Judge Kavanaugh has reflected on himself is that one is, one's objective is to be, quote, a man for others. And I think as you, uh, as you look at the life, as you look at the work, you look at the character of Judge Brett Kavanaugh, you can see that it has always been about others. Judge Kavanaugh graduated from Yale Law School, fellow in the United States Solicitor General's office, clerked in the Third Circuit, and in fact, and then clerked for the man that he would be replacing on the Supreme Court of the United States, Justice Anthony Kennedy. He also served as associate counsel at the White House. Since 2006, served on what many regard as the second highest court in the land, the Court of Appeals of the District of Columbia. During his time on the bench, Judge Kavanaugh has been called a judge's judge. A stunning 39 of his 48 clerks have gone on to clerk at the Supreme Court. 
His peers in the judiciary rightly see him as a thought leader. His opinions are cited by courts across the country on a regular basis, and the Supreme Court has endorsed Judge Kavanaugh's opinions more than a dozen times. I think that's worth a round of applause. <laughs> I mean, the truth is, Judge, Judge Brett Kavanaugh has established a record of enormous weight and credibility on the bench. He's written 307 opinions, and they've proven not only is the strength of his intellect, uh, but also you can see, uh, you can see that he uh, has a, a crystal clear judicial philosophy and fealty to the Constitution of the United States. Judge Kavanaugh has proven his support for our first freedom, religious liberty. He stood for the Second Amendment's right to keep and bear arms. And he's always enforced the Constitution's clear and unambiguous limits on government power, upholding the separation of powers, checks and balances, principle of federalism that's essential to our freedom. The truth is, Judge Brett Kavanaugh supports the principles of limited government enshrined by our founders in the Constitution of the United States of America. He's a textualist, an originalist, and yet he enjoys a broad degree of support. Uh, Amy, Amy uh, Chua, a professor at Yale Law School, has praised Judge Kavanaugh as a, quote, mentor for young lawyers, particularly women. She's actually helped 10 Yale students obtain clerkships with him, including her own daughter. She would tell the Wall Street Journal, and, and I quote, There's no judge I would trust more than Brett Kavanaugh to be a teacher, an advocate, and a friend. In a recent article in Politico, Lisa Blatt describes herself as a liberal feminist lawyer who's argued 35 cases before the Supreme Court, wrote, in her words, I quote, Democrats should support Judge Kavanaugh. Quit attacking him full stop. Lisa actually acknowledged that, uh, that when Judge Kavanaugh becomes Justice Kavanaugh, that he, uh, he won't, in her words, come out the way I want in each case or even most cases. But she went on to say he will do the job with dignity, intelligence, empathy, and integrity. And the Senate should confirm him. Thank you, Lisa Blatt, for your integrity and your support. I actually got to spend some time. As the president was deliberating who his nominee might be, I got to spend some time with Judge Kavanaugh. And uh, I can't tell you how, how impressed I was with this man for others. Uh, because beyond the extraordinary career and the extraordinary intellect and the extraordinary record of this judge, you, you find a character and a humility combined with strength uh, that... Uh, that, that left me just profoundly impressed. Uh, here's a man who clearly puts his family first, a devoted husband, a devoted father. But he also puts his community first, coaches his daughter's basketball team. He's a, uh, he's a reader at his church on Sundays, and he, he tutors kids at a local elementary school. And uh, the whole country caught a glimpse of Judge Brett Kavanaugh's character and heart just two days after the president nominated him, despite dramatic changes happening in his life, he still showed up and kept a commitment he'd made long before, and he was serving meals of mac and cheese to D.C.'s homeless. That's Judge Brett Kavanaugh. Despite that record, despite that obvious character and temperament, um, it's extraordinary to look at the attacks that have been leveled at Judge Kavanaugh since he was named. I mean, uh, you look over the accusations. Some have gone after Judge Kavanaugh for literally just doing his job while he worked in a prior administration. Uh, they found evidence of his supposedly extreme views based on sports articles that he wrote for his college newspaper. Uh, they criticize his so-called elite world 
while in the very same article quoted a local bartender who described him as a middle-aged guy who likes to pop in for a Budweiser and a burger. (laughs) And my personal favorite, (laughs) the media actually went after Judge Brett Kavanaugh for being a middle-class American with a middle-class budget who likes baseball. (laughs) The truth is, if we lived in a more respectful time, Judge Kavanaugh would be overwhelmingly confirmed by the United States Senate. I mean, after all, Justice Scalia was confirmed 98 to 0. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg received the support of 96 senators. Sadly, Senate Democrats have no intention, no intention of giving this good man and this brilliant jurist the consideration and the support that he deserves. I mean, truthfully, uh, what the Constitution says is advise and consent has uh, turned into obstruct and oppose. And it's true. I mean, the truth is it's not just limited to our nominee to the Supreme Court. To date, Democrats have tried to defeat or delay almost every single judicial nominee that President Trump has sent up for confirmation. As we speak, because of the Democrats' political gamesmanship in the United States Senate, There's an unprecedented 42 district court nominees who are just waiting for a full Senate vote. And the truth is, when the time comes to vote, nearly every nominee uh, draws significant, if not universal, opposition from Democrats. The truth is, there's been a handful of Democrats that have been voting with us from time to time, but it's a very small number. I mean, just look at Neil Gorsuch. Even though he had a unanimous well-qualified rating from the American Bar Association, even though he'd been confirmed by the Senate in 2006 unanimously, all but three Senate Democrats actually voted against confirming Neil Gorsuch as a justice to the Supreme Court of the United States. They're pulling out all the stops on Judge Kavanaugh. You know, it used to be unthinkable at a time... Another time in the life of this nation, not long ago, that uh, it was unthinkable that a United States senator would actually announce their opposition to a nominee even before the nominee was announced. (laughs) But that actually happened. I mean, five Senate Democrats announced they were opposed to President Trump's nominee to the Supreme Court before President Trump nominated Judge Brett Kavanaugh. That's not advise and consent. That is simply obstruct and oppose. And the American people deserve better. Now led by Senator Schumer, Senate Democrats are concocting new rules and standards in an obvious attempt to delay confirmation. They're demanding a ridiculous number of documents in Judge Kavanaugh's past. Chairman Grassley has been standing strong, and we're grateful for him. Chairman Grassley has a long reputation and credibility for a commitment to extensive and transparent vetting of judicial nominees, and he's proving it once again. But he's also putting guardrails of of reasonable expectation around document production, and we're grateful for that. But think about this. During the confirmation of Justice Elena Kagan, the Obama administration turned over 173,000 pages of her White House records. By contrast, the Senate Judiciary Committee has already received 430,000 pages for Judge Kavanaugh, more than any other Supreme Court nominee in American history. And some in the Democrat minority in the Senate say it's still not enough. Look, the truth of the matter is we're... We're going to do all that we can to make sure and support this nominee. We're going to provide members of the Senate the opportunity and the the resources to review his record in careful detail. But when you look at his record, when you look at his character, you should know Judge Brett Kavanaugh deserves the support of every member of the United States Senate. And we're going to fight to take his case all the way to confirmation.
But we need your help. We need your continued engagement. We need the RNLA, not just those of you that came to the lunch today, but your 6,000 members who are leaders in your communities to get out and spread the word among your peers. Spread the word in, in every state in the nation. Get the word to every senator from every state about what Judge Bre Brett Kavanaugh brings. I hope you leave here today and understand that I, I hold the view that the most powerful media in America is not television news, it's not the internet or social media. I've always believed and still believe that the most powerful media in America has always been and will always be word of mouth. When someone hears from you about an issue that you believe is important to the life of the nation, someone who respects you as a person and as a professional, it has enormous impact. So I hope you'll leave here today and I hope you'll go tell the story of this extraordinary nominee. The confirmation hearings are set for September 4th, so there's plenty of time in the days between now and then. I mean, just say, you know, I was in Washington the other day. I was having lunch. I ran into Mike. <laughs> so it took him about a half hour just to, like, summarize all the reasons why Judge Brett Kavanaugh should be Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Get out and tell the story, RNLA. We need you to do it. We need you to do it. All the leaders in this room, the respect that you command in your profession and your communities, let's go out and tell the story of this, of this good man who will be an extraordinary, extraordinary justice on the Supreme Court of the United States. So let me close by simply again saying thank you. Uh, thank you uh, for the work that you've done here at the RNLA to support this administration past and present and future. Your, your stalwart support is making it possible for us to to be delivering on our promise uh, to appoint men and women to our courts at every level that will hold and respect the Constitution of the United States as written. But uh, it's also that growing economy. It's strengthening American security. It's all that we've been able to do. We've been able to do because of your support and the strength of your support. But I do want to challenge you that right after we get Judge Brett Kavanaugh confirmed to the Supreme Court of the United States, I don't know if you noticed, but we got some elections coming up. <laughs> in November, and I want everyone in the RNLA to do everything in your power to re-elect Republican majorities to the United States Senate and the United States House of Representatives. We've got to get out. We've got to get out and tell the story. And the truth is, we need renewed energy. We're going to need you out there. I need you out there on the confirmation of Judge Brett Kavanaugh, but then right after that, take a breath and then go right back to work <laughs> on the midterms. Because you know that uh, history records, history records that that first midterm election for the party in the White House can be challenging. In fact, that's been true for our party, or for all but two of the, uh, of two elections uh, out of the last hundred years, two midterm elections for the last hundred years. I mean, that's the conventional wisdom that the first midterm election is tough. But I think you all know what President Donald Trump thinks of conventional wisdom. <laughs> we made history in 2016, and we're going to make history again in 2018 when we re-elect Republican majorities in the House and the Senate. So let's get out and do it, RNLA. And let's, let's, do it, let's do it because uh, we really, really know the stakes. We know the stakes in this election. From our courts to our economy to the security of the country, we, we need to be out telling our story and doing our part. But I'm absolutely convinced, more so after seeing the enthusiasm of all the lawyers gathered here today, that if we all do all that we can, We'll have a new justice on the Supreme Court named Brett Kavanaugh, who will make us proud, who will uphold the Constitution of the United States of America for decades to come. We'll, uh, we'll reelect those great Republican majorities in the House and the Senate. We'll keep this economy growing and we'll keep America stronger and more prosperous. And with your continued support in all these causes, 
with President Donald Trump in the White House and with God's help, I know we will make America safe again. We will make America prosperous again. And to borrow a phrase, <laughs> we will make America great again. Thank you, RNLA. Thanks for your tremendous support. God bless you and God bless America. Thank you.